Hi everyone, good evening, and thanks to everyone who's watching this on a Friday evening. Uh, we have another episode of our uh, culture, Europe, uh, religion and culture in Europe sessions, and the guest today is Raid El Dagestani. Our uh, topic today is quite, it doesn't sound so complicated, but you do really need to concentrate a little bit more in order to understand everything, and I can tell you, you have to be there by spirit and by mind. So uh, the topic is the Sufi spiritual ethos challenge or chance for today's ethos. Uh, even though someone would even think what this, what does this have to do with Europe? Uh, the reason is very simple. As all of us know, uh, historically Sufism played a really huge part and a really important role when it comes to the uh, spread of Islam and Islamic thought throughout Europe. And it's very present even today, Bosnia and Herzegovina, for example, has a very, uh, rich culture and history of Sufism. Uh, actually, Sufis were traders who, in fact, kind of brought Islam to Bosnia and Herzegovina. So they definitely played a really huge role in here. And today, with all of these uh, diverse groups that we can see in Islam, we can say that uh, there is a challenge of what is the right path, how to grow, how to go through self-development, how to uh, follow the path of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, so we chose to discuss this topic today a little bit further, and uh, the guest today is Professor Raid al Dagistani. Raid, very welcome <laughs> today. Thank you so much for being today the lecture. And uh, I will tell you a little bit more about uh, Raid, and then we will proceed to his presentation. So uh, Raid is has obtained his BA in philosophy at the Faculty of Art at the University of Ljubljana. Then he later pursued his postgraduate studies in Arabic and Islamic studies at the Institute for Arabism and Islamic Studies at the University of Münster, where he is also a uh, postdoc fellow today and a lecturer at the Center for Islamic Theology. He's author of many, many uh, monographs and translations, and uh, he has a very interesting uh, academic uh, art uh, work behind him. So we have linked a, uh, uh, the web page to, uh, to his biography and to all of the resources and the titles that he's an author of uh, in the Facebook uh, post, where you can follow all of his work if you are interested more. And he also received his PhD in Islamic mysticism. And the topic uh, of his PhD was the epistemology of the heart, the cognitive aspects of Islamic mysticism. So for all of you who are not so maybe um, well acquainted with Sufism or Tasawwuf, which is actually the right term for this, uh, for this area, uh, studying Sufism is a really rich process. I, I would think it, you agree, right? <laughs> so basically, yeah, I don't want to keep the uh, people too much uh, with, with uh, all of these introductions. Actually, uh, the main thing that I want to say to everyone who is watching this is to keep their minds and spirits open and that Sufism is a process of growth. While you learn it, you, you have to spiritually grow in order to understand it further and properly. <laughs> so, right, I will give you then uh, like the stage and please share with us your presentation. Well, thank you. Uh, Salam Alaikum first. Uh, good evening, everyone uh, from Münster, Germany. I would like to kindly thank uh, Aida Hajic and to the whole team actually for inviting me to give a presentation for Al Shark Bosnia Hub. And uh, thank you, um, dear Aida, uh, very much for this kind uh, and warm introduction. Um, I have, you know, I have still very uh, vivid memory of my student days in a beautiful and uh, inspiring city of Sarajevo, where I spent a winter semester uh, studying at the Faculty of Islamic Studies, Faculty of Islam Nauka, and uh, where uh, I also met, uh, met Aida. Um, so, of course, it, it would be, in my opinion, much, much nicer if we could meet in presence, as we say here in Germany, but there is sure uh, also a great benefit um, of, the, of digital and, and virtual form, uh, which can immediately be shared with others. So, um, the presentation which I'm aiming to give today is actually a kind of um, 
maybe I can open already the share the presentation. I will try here. Um, yes, can you see the presentation? Okay. So um, the presentation which I'm um, giving today is actually a kind of summary, as I said, uh, and at the same time, uh, a simplified version of two articles of mine, which were both published in 2018, or um, it is uh, at least based on these two articles as its uh, main sources. Um, the one is, um, as you can see here, um, rethinking Sufism, spiritual education, uh, education as a means to counter religious radicalism in Islam. And the second, uh, another uh, article is ethics in Islam, an overview of theological, philosophical and mystical approaches. Um, so let me uh, begin by uh, saying that I will first give some general uh, introductory remarks where I will explain uh, some basic terms and relations also between these terms. And then I will approach Sufism and define, define it in its classical uh, and broader understanding. After that, we will take um, a closer look at some fundamental techniques of Sufi spirituality and their ethical aspects. And in this context, I would like to illuminate especially five fundamental methods or techniques of Sufi spirituality. That is mindfulness, muraqaba, self-examination or religious uh, introspection. We can discuss about these terms also later. So muhasaba, uh, contemplation, tafakkur, invocation, tadakkur, and futua, which can be translated as um, spiritual chivalry. Um, and at the end, I will make some concluding remarks and also share with you a few uh, standard definitions of Sufism, which emphasize Sufism primarily as an ethical, no ethical discipline. So in this sense, um, let me begin with general in introductory remarks. Um, one of the most important dimensions of religion in general is its ethical or ethico-spiritual dimension. Religious ethics covers various rules, commandments and law that enable believers to lead or to lead a good, righteous and virtuous life. The cultivation of ethos or ethical dimensions also prevents the emergence of religious radicalism based on ignorance, exclusiveness, intolerance, and even violence. Religious radicalism as a result of an individual or collective crisis, which is ultimately, in my opinion, a crisis of consciousness, thus goes hand in hand with the loss of ethos and spirituality. And with this diagram, I just wanted to emphasize or to, to um, illustrate actually the relationship between religion and ethics, between Islam and Sufism and Sufism and ethics. So ethics um, is a philosophical discipline which deals with the question of human virtues, moral princi principles and right conduct. Although ethics and morality are closely related, there is a subtle distinction between those two terms. While morality basically refers to good human character, behavior or conduct, ethics represents a philosophical examination of principles, standards and rules that prescribe what an individual ought to do. So the first addresses the proper behavior of men, while the later uh, addresses why such actions are proper and examines their uh, conditions and principles. More, uh, morality is therefore a subject of ethics and ethics is in turn the philosophy of morality. This relationship between ethics and morals or morality 
is also reflected in the corresponding Arabic terminology. The general term used for morals in, uh, in an Islamic context is akhlaq, or in singular, khuluq, which also means good character. Now, because the word akhlaq is etymologically connected with the word khalik, which means creator in Arabic, and makhluk, which means creature or cr uh, created being, it assumes a good relationship between the human being and God, as well as among human beings. Whereas Islamic ethics as a science dealing with ways to gain and maintain virtues, noble character and right conduct is called ilm al akhlaq which is the science of good character, the science of morality. And you see the uh, equivalent correspondence to, to the notion that we have about morality and, and ethics on the level of, of uh, of, the, uh, of terms. Ethics can therefore generally be understood also as a theory of virtue or moral science. In Ethics in Islam is however not a delimited domain, but rather a subfield with different emphasis, uh, uh, emphasis and epistemic results, depending on the theoretical or practical context uh, of a particular field. So Islamic ethics is therefore not an exclusive subject of Islamic philosophy, but also a matter of jurists, religious scholars, theologians, and Sufis. Since the prof uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not leave any systematic uh, theory or, of uh, mandatory moral principles, Muslims have to interpret the provisions of divine revelation again and again in different discourses. Ethical uh, questions have thus been discussed not only in philosophy, but also, uh, especially in Islamic jurisprudence, Sufi literature, theological treatise, political theories, and even in medical compendiums. Majid Fakhri, uh, for example, divides ethical theories in Islam in four major fields, it's as you can see uh, here. First, scriptural morality. Second, theological theories. Third, philosophical theories. And fourth, religious theories. Now, although this classification may not be sufficiently differentiated, it at least points out the difficulty of being, uh, of defining Islamic ethics as one single and independent domain. There are nonetheless some fundamental ethical themes and common fe uh, features issued in all main Islamic disciplines, as in Islamic dialectical theology, Kalam, classical Islamic philosophy, Falsafa, and especially in Islamic mysticism or Sufism, Tasawwuf, uh, to which this presentation will uh, referring to. Now we can approach uh, the second chapter, let's say, uh, and try to define Sufism on a general level. Um, Sufism or Islamic mysticism. Um, and I'm not going now to discuss the, the um, interpretation Sufism as uh, Islamic mysticism. Uh, we can discuss this, this relationship later, um, but Sufism, or Islamic mysticism is classically understood as a path of spiritual self-purification, tariq or suluk, and at the same time as esoteric science or inner knowledge, ilm al -batin. As such, Sufism as a way of moral perfection and mystical realization is far away from naive altruism, unreflecting sentimentalism, or superficial esotericism. Quite the opposite, it combines via activa and via contemplativa, theory and practice, knowledge and action, love and discipline, experience and thought. And Sufism has indeed been manifested throughout the history as an, uh, an effective force for individual self-transformation as well as uh, social reformation. Not always, but uh, 
for the most part. Now, among the Sufis were also many thinkers, many Sufi scholars who had a more uh, theoretical approach to Sufism and who were attempting to systematically establish it as a genuine Islamic spiritual science by explaining various inner states, ahwal, and spiritual stations, and initiatic techniques of the Sufi mystical way. But ahwal and makamat are two basic categories in Sufism. <clears throat> Abu Bakr al-Kalabadi, for example, author, uh, author of the famous Sufi manual, Kitab al-Ta'arruf li madhab ahl al-Tasawwuf, um, defines Sufism as a science of the spiritual states. Ilm al-Ahwal, science of the spiritual states. So you see the close connection with religious psychology, actually. Though, uh, since the states are regarded as consequence of acts, they are, they are only experienced by those, says Halabadi, whose acts have been right. In this manner, Al-Kalabadi continues that for someone who tries to transform his inner self, refine his character, and improve his actions, it is first of all necessary that he should know the vices of the soul and be thoroughly acquainted with the soul, its education, and the training of its character. Only, says Kalabadi, when the soul is properly addressed and its habits um, uh, amended, when it is schooled in the divine manners, a man is able to overcome his or her passions, watch over his thoughts, muraqaba al khawatir is also as a, a sub-science in Sufism, and purify his heart, tasfiyatul qalb. Uh, along this, this argument or these lines, uh, Abul Qasim al junaid from Baghdad, a great uh, Sufi master from Baghdad, often referred, uh, referred to as the Sultan of mystics, uh, states that the most important components of Sufism as a whole are self-purification, self-conquest, spiritual knowledge, and care for the community. And you can see that, that three of those fear uh, of those uh, four are actually in the domain of, of ethics or of morality. The fundamental dimensions of Sufism were outlined more than a century later in a similar way by the great Muslim theologian and mystic Abu Hamad al-Ghazali. In his autobiography, al munqid min al-Dalal, he asserted that the complete way of the Sufis includes knowledge and action belief and practice, discipline and experience. That which is the most distinctive of mysticism cannot be gained merely by reading and studying, says Al-Ghazali, but only by mystical taste of, re re of uh, the reality, uh, dawq, uh, spiritual state, hal, and transformation of personal qualities. And mystical taste here is one of the, um, uh, of, the, of the forms of knowledge in Sufism, one of the uh, ways of knowledge in Sufism, uh, which refers to uh, transrational uh, and metaphysical knowledge. So immediate inner experience, spiritual states, and moral transformations of character are actually those dimensions of Sufism which are despite the differences in opinions discussed essentially in all important Sufi works. Now, again, against this background, uh, Sufism can be understood as a holistic ethical project, I would argue, whose aim is an increasing awareness of God, purification of the soul, mystical realization, and virtuous conduct. With the uh, aid of initiatic techniques and, uh, and teachings of Sufi spirituality, such as muraqaba, mindfulness, or concentration on God, muhasaba, self-examination or religious introspection, tafakkur, contemplation, tadakkur, invocation or dhikr, and futua, uh, a believer can fundamentally transform his character and improve his behavior. 
continuous practice and performance of these activities enable a believer to develop first uh, a more critical consciousness towards oneself, second, intimate relationship to God, and third, a more inclusivistic, open-minded, humble, and compassionate attitude toward others. Now we will approach this, uh, or I will go through all of these uh, five techniques. <clears throat> so we will approach now uh, uh, some fundamental techniques of Sufi spirituality and, uh, and, and try to, to illuminate their uh, ethical aspects, which is uh, relevant uh, for, for, for this lecture. Starting with mindfulness and self-examination. Mindfulness in Arabic, uh, muraqaba, is the religious spiritual is in the religious spiritual context of Islam, usually understood as a concentration on God, as the absolute truth and the absolute good. This is also an important point in this context. It is a method with which a person who meditates uh, meditates in, increases his or her awareness of the divine presence in this world. Yet the ultimate purpose and goal of Muraqaba is not only to increase the awareness of, of God, but also to act in accordance with that awareness. And here comes the, the, the ethical uh, aspect. This means not only to attain a higher consciousness, to put it uh, in other words, but also to develop a proper virtues and to stimulate, uh, to motivate the perfect moral conduct of, of life. <clears throat> the, the very uh, motivation of Muraqaba that Sufis draw upon is the concept of Ihsan, which stands, as you know, for the noble way of life and religious self-perfection. Uh, Ihsan is the highest level in these threefold dimensions of religion of Islam, Islam, Iman, Ihsan, when namely the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was asked what Ihsan actually means, he answered uh, famously, to worship God as you, as you see him, for even though you may not see him, know with certainty or be fully aware that he always sees you. For a Sufi, the state of mindfulness is actually the knowledge that God is always watching him. So it, it's a state of mind, it's a state of consciousness. And perseverance in this awareness of the divine is therefore fundamental principle of morality and righteous way of life in Sufism. And as you can see, I was, try, I, I, I was trying to uh, connect uh, these aspects of religion with the uh, disciplines uh, which uh, deals with those ap uh, aspects. Uh, for example, Islamic jurisprudence um, or main domain of Islamic jurisprudence is orthopraxy, abadat and muhammalat. The main domain of ilm al-kalam of Islamic theology is orthodoxy, is uh, the question about belief and the nature of God, so aqidah and usul al -din. And the domain of Islamic mysticism as a science, as Ilm al tasawuf is a spirituality in morality in form of Taskiyah and Ma'arif. Now, but since the act of spiritual focusing on the divine reality, Muraqaba, requires awareness of one's own state of mind, uh, then Muraqaba is insepar inseparably connected with Muhasaba that is self-examination or, or examination of one's own consciousness. <clears throat> In Abu Qasim al-Qushayri's uh, celebrated epistle on Sufism, uh, Arisala al qushariya we read that when the Sufi takes account of what he has done in the past, corrects his inner state in the present, follows the path of truth, take takes good care of his heart in dealing with God Most High, he will then realize that God, says al Kosheri, is watching over him, that he is close to his heart, that he knows all his states, watches all his actions, and hears all he says. 
Muhasaba, alongside with Muraqaba, plays a central role in the psycho-spiritual theories of Sufism. The important function of spiritual introspection is purification of the heart, actually, which leads to sincere and from an Islamic uh, point of view, or from an Islamic religious perspective, also fundamentally good actions. It leads to, to good action. In this sense, both Muraqaba and Muhasaba have an intrinsic ethical character. Both Muraqaba and Muhasaba, as a spiritual uh, uh, techniques of Sufism, have an intrinsic ethical character. Many Sufis confirm that Muraqaba and Muhasaba are not simply inseparably connected, but rather two supplementary activities. Abdallah Murtaj said, for example, awareness of God is watching over your innermost heart by taking note of the unseen with every breath and every phrase. And only after preservance in Muraqaba and Muhasaba can the meditator, the person who meditates, receive the first glimmers of spiritual knowledge, or as uh, Al Nasrabadi puts it, fear of God distances you from disobedience, awareness of God leads to the path of true realities. This combination uh, of self-examination and constant concentration on God help us in increasing and intensifying the awareness that a human being as a microcosm is fundamentally connected with the creation, with the whole creation, with the universe as, uh, as the macrocosm. And that through Murakaba, and Muhasaba, we are capable to change the world actually in a more positive direction. In, it is in this light that we should understand Ibn Arabi, uh, Ibn Arabi statement that concentration on God is part of developing our awareness of the meaning of the world. Again, that the concentration on God is a part of developing our awareness of the meaning of the world. For as Ibn Arabi says, God is not above us somewhere, but here in the world, although hidden. Now we can move to the uh, second pair, let's say, uh, contemplation and invocation, tafakkur and tadakkur. Contemplation, tafakkur, and invocation, remembering, um, are deeply rooted in the Islamic tradition, supported by the Quran and Hadith, the saints of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. A spiritual wayfarer in Islam namely considers the world as a sphere of manifestations, as a science, a yacht of divine reality. Everything in the, in, in the visible world of Dahir becomes, uh, becomes a, a symbol uh, for the unseen, al ghaib or al batin One's observation of the wonders of the universe and reflection on the mysteries, asrar, and beauties, uh, beauties uh, of, of life, of, of world, jalal, um, accompanied but by constant awareness of the divine presence, muraqaba, finally leads to the certain knowledge, ma'arifa, or ilm al of God's infinity, majesty, and mercy. This profound experience is the very backbone uh, of the positive transformation that the meditator can accomplish on his or her inner spiritual journey. So recognition of the divine benevolence, favor and sublimity is not simply a, a, a royal road uh, to the recognition of the divine itself. It is also the key to one's existential ethical improvement, which is the practical aim of the spiritual journey according to Sufism. And in this regard, Al-Ghazali states, for example, <clears throat> the way to recognize, uh, to, to cognize of God is to glorify him in his creation, to contemplate his wonderful works, to understand the wisdom in his various inventions. It is the means to strength, strengthen uh, uh, certainty and happiness, Sa'ada, and in this way is seen the difference in the levels of the pious. 
the Almighty created the minds and perfected them with revelation, ordering men with such minds to think of his uh, creatures, to contemplate and learn a lesson from what wonders he has entrusted in his creation. From Al -Ghazali. For Sufis, the praxis uh, of invocation is indispensable companion of contemplation, which in the best case can help to penetrate metaphysical truths, but cannot guarantee the attainment of the ultimate tranquility of the heart. So reflection or contemplation does not bring about calmness, the ataraxis, the ataraxia of the heart. While invocation, dhikr, has a compensation with which give joy, as Kalabadi says. For only in the remembrance of God, as you know, the hearts find peace, as Quran teaches us in, in the chapter 13, verse 28. All four mentioned activities, let's uh, define them as activities. Muraqaba, muhasaba, tafakkur, and tadakkur are undoubtedly the pillars of the Sufi spirituality with profound noetic and ethic qualities. Examination of one's own consciousness, self-discipline, meditative invocation of God's names, and mindful contemplation of God's manifestation as universal, as universal spiritual values are not actually features reserved or preserved only to Sufi practice, but also a religious duty in some way for all Muslims who strive for inner purification, tasqiyat al nafs, spiritual realization, maharifa, certainty of faith, al iman al yaqeen, correctness of action, sitq, and moral perfection of character, of character, al ihsan. Or uh, as Hassan al Basri, the famous uh, one of the first Sufis uh, puts it, men of knowledge have been res uh, resorting to thought with the remembrance of God and to the remembrance of God with thought, imploring the hearts to speak until the hearts responded with wisdom. In short, these methods structure, in my opinion, the most important techniques through which the Sufi notion of morality is grounded as embodied practical, emotional, existential, and conceptual disposi dispositions. Now, uh, we are approaching the, the last part uh, of those uh, five techniques, um, namely Futua. And here I will refer to Futua, or in the context of Futua, just to uh, its spiritual dimension. And I'm not going to a historical development and all other aspects of Futua as an uh, institution. At the core of this initiatic science of Sufism, Ilm al Tasawwuf, or Suluk, also, lies uh, also the knowledge and practice of Futua, a kind of Sufi moral code which leads men to a deeper awareness of the divine reality. And, and this is important, to generosity toward others. The way of Futua associates right actions with spiritual virtues and reveals the true meaning of compassion, self-denial, hospitality, generosity, patience, renunciation, gratitude, kindness, repentance, friendship, and love, which are actually universal spiritual uh, religious uh, uh, virtues. Futua, which is often interpreted as a, as a spiritual chivalry, is considered as a realization of noble character and virtues, way of life, guided by the divine, by example of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his companions. The Sufi are aiming to abandon all improper behavior, and to acquire and exercise the best behavior proper to human beings. Futua as an essential Sufi concept of morality is thus a code of honorable 
conduct that follows the example of the prophets, saints, sages, and so-called intimate friends of God, awliya. Now, Sufism, driven by, uh, by the spirit and norm of Futuwa, is about constantly recognizing the status of, hum of humanity and, and acting correctly. In this sense, Muhammad ibn Ali al-Qassab stresses that Sufism means a noble moral, moral character trait, uh, a, a, a noble moral uh, character trait, uh, that a noble person shows in a noble moment in time, in the presence of a noble company. That is one of the uh, um, widely also uh, um, known definition uh, of, of Sufism. Futua is thus not only a bon ton or etiquette, but a state of mind based on spiritual virtues and noble qualities um, arising from inner spiritual struggle and self-overcoming. But above all, it means placing other people above oneself. This is the, this is the main aspect of Futua. It is being gener generous and altruistic. It is self-denial, immunity to disappointment, indulgence toward other peop uh, uh, people's shortcomings. It is a fearless struggle against tyranny love of God, love of his creation, love of love, as uh, Al-Jariha says. Now, despite the differences in opinion on Futua, <clears throat> all Sufis focus thereby on one central element, namely of heroic generosity or effective altruism. That is giving preference to the other people over one's own self. It is obvious from what has been just said that the cultivation of Futua, which leads to an altruistic and inclusive attitude toward others, can undoubtedly be considered as an active ethical constituent of Sufi spiritual education in fighting against the vices of one's own soul on, on the one hand, and in increasing, uh, increasing tolerance acceptance and altruism on the other. Against this background, Sufism, Sufism as an authentic and integral, that means ethical spiritual Islamic education can to my opinion generally be regarded as an, as an important component at least for building a moral character on, on the individual level, as well as peace, stability and mutual understanding on the collective level. Now I will try to conclude with some, some uh, last remarks. Karl Rahner, as you know, one of the most influential uh, Catholic theologians of the 20th uh, century, uh, said once famously that uh, the Christian of the future will be a mystic or he will not exist at all. But it is less known that Eric Geoffroy the renowned French expert on Sufism made a similar statement about Islam when he entitled his book, L'Islam sera spirituel ou ne sera plus. Islam will be spiritual or it will, not, it will not be. Now, both thinkers clearly recognized that the, uh, that, uh, uh, the ne necessary, condition, necessary condition for the survival of religion or rather of the believer lies in his or her capacity for spiritualization. The spiritualization should be understood here in this context um, in a holistic sense. By that, I mean as an integral ethical religious education, which includes theory and practice, action and contemplation, knowledge and experience, self-discipline and cultivation of law. The Italian priest, missionary, and expert of Islamic mysticism, Giuseppe Scatolin, also underscores the importance of Sufism in the context of moral spiritual self-realization of men, emphasizing its priorization of spirituality over rituality. 
he says it is not enough to perform exterior ceremonies without a deep conversion of the heart, you know, taqallub al-qalb or tawbah also. Muslim scholars and especially Sufis emphasized the importance of, of uh, vigilant observation of one's own thoughts, reflections, and ideas that can grow into drives and incent uh, incentives and becomes habits affecting real life. They emphasize, they, uh, uh, they emphasize that a person should try to change harmful notions uh, um, to, to change harmful notions and internal ideas before they become desires and drives, because changing, uh, changing a drive or motive is easier than stopping a uh, consequent action and removing an action is easier than trying to uproot it after it has been a habit. The entire effort of self-discipline and self-mastery is for the Sufis therefore not an end in itself, but rather a means to achieve illumination, maharifa, as we, if we understand maharifa as a kind of illumination, uh, as a transcendental or transcending knowledge, as well as religious virtues as patience, sabr, piety, tawakkul, uh, gratitude, shukr, and love, maham. The whole enterprise of via purgativa is a means to achieve a higher state of uh, consciousness that is capable of a holistic experience of reality and uh, an inclusive and empathic attitude, not only towards other believers, but also toward all human, uh, human beings and the whole creation in general. It is therefore of great importance for today's intercultural and inter-religious context to rediscover and to rethink Islamic ethos manifested primarily in the Islamic purgative contemplative tradition of Sufism and its various techniques which were, uh, which were outlined uh, in this presentation. The rich ethico-religious heritage of Sufism as a mystical spiritual dimension of Islam, whose main concern is the way of perfecting human character and achieving a state of self-realization should not be considered, uh, to my opinion, as an, you know, as an utopian vision or an abstract phenomenon. On the contrary, I think it should rather be perceived as a serious alternative means in dealing with some of the existential and moral challenges of our time. The theoretical and practical framework of the Sufi ethics thus can and perhaps should provide the basics or the basis for a, uh, for a higher moral quality of life, of individual, as well as of society as a whole. <clears throat> now, all in all, Sufism can be regarded, and this is my final point, can be regarded as a fundamentally ethical project in two regards, in two ways. First, as a path of spiritual purification, insofar it is a method of self-transcendence par excellence, consisting of various techniques and practices that we, uh, we saw already, this is uh, one uh, component. And second, as a result of this path or method, insofar it produced the genuine ethical religious virtues like humbleness, gratitude, patience, altruism, love, and spiritual chivalry in form for, of uh, futua. So it can be regarded as a fundamental ethical project in these two regards, as a way, as a path, which is already and, and uh, a moral act uh, in, in a process, and as a result out of this process. Uh, so now for the end, let me share with you uh, some classical definitions of Sufism in which the, the ethical or moral character of the Sauf is emphasized more than any other aspect. There were some attempts um, by classical Sufi scholars and masters 
to define Sufism primarily as, uh, as ethos or as an ethical enterprise. The following definitions, which I want to share with you, and which are rather a kind of allusions actually, and symbolic expressions of spiritual experiences and modus vivendi of Sufis. They are not uh, uh, definitions in, in, um, uh, in, in a real way. Um, but anyway, these, these allusions, these, let's say, definitions are chiefly compiled from the famous epistle on Sufism uh, of Al-Kusheri, Arisala al kushariya and from the hagiography of the great Persian Sufi mystic and poet, Farah Din Attar, Tadkirat al-Awliya, namely. Although they appear in, in, in almost um, every classical manual on Islamic mysticism, in uh, maybe a little in a different form or in different na narration, but uh, they are there. So here are some of the most widely used definitions of the term Sufism expressed by uh, some of the most influential Sufi masters. Uh, Bishar al-Hafi says, the Sufi is he who keeps a pure heart towards God. And here in one sentence, the Sufism is connected with purity, you know, tasawuf, safa. Abu al-Hayyuk Hussein al-Nuri says, it is the attribute of the Sufi, we could say the main attribute of the Sufi, to be at rest when he has nothing and unselfish when he finds uh, anything. When Abu Hassan al Nuri um, was asked, uh, What is Tasawwuf? He responds, Tasawwuf is not a system composed of rule, rules or sciences, although we, we also uh, uh, try to uh, interpret it, Sufism as a science from another perspective, as an Ilm al Tasawwuf. But it is, it is morals. Uh, for for uh, Abu Hassan al Nuri, the main character of Tasawwuf is morals. And it is impossible to come, to come forth to the moral nature of God, either by means of rules or by means of science. But through self-examination, through exactly those techniques, uh, which I try to uh, emphasize. And, uh, and he also said, Tasawwuf is freedom. A Tasawwuf huwa al khuriya and generosity, an absence of self-constraint and, and uh, liberty. The, the famous um, saying of al junaid is that tasawwuf is, is to be chosen for purity. Tasawwuf means to be chosen for purity. Again, we have Sufism connected here essentially with purity, with inner purity. Uh, and he explains, Whoever is thus chosen and made pure from all except God is a Sufi. Um, he also said, the Sawf is to purify the heart from the recurrence of inborn weakness and to take leave of one's natural characteristics and to practice that which is eternal the best or which is best for your eternity. Uh, which is best for a psychological destiny of men, um, and to bestow sincere counsel on the whole, on the whole people or, or, or on the community, and faithfully to observe the truth and to follow the prophet in respect of the law. You know, he tries to connect here to Saul as a mystical way also with orthodoxy and, and uh, embracing also the social aspects of. Uh, being there for the com com community of uh, believers. <clears throat> and the last uh, three sentences that I have um, are, um, one is uh, described also uh, by al Jureri, uh, who says the Sawf is to enter into every lofty disposition and to go forth from every low disposition. With other words, to enter, to realize, to, to cultivate the virtue, the good character, the good disposition, and to transcend 
the bad disposition, the bad character. <clears throat> there is another uh, saying which is um, sometimes uh, connected with uh, Bakr uh, uh, al Katani and sometimes uh, um, referring to Al Junaid, which says, Tasawuf is a good disposition. Again, he that exceeds you in goodness or in good character has exceeded you in purity of heart, when, or in a, another version in Tasawuf. He who exceeds you in, in, in good character has exceeded you in Tasawwuf. And the last one, the Sufi is a true Sufi only when he regards all mankind as his own family. It's a very strong and very beautiful sentence, actually, uh, which um, in, uh, excludes uh, other opinion or other, other consciousness besides the conscious, con consciousness that perceive the whole humanity as brotherhood or sisterhood, either in religion or in the context of belief and faith or in the context of humanity. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm looking forward for discussion and questions. Thank you very much, Raid. Uh, it was really insightful. Thanks for all of these definitions. And it's like next time when someone asks me to tell him more about Sufism, I'm going to definitely just share this video and say, here's everything you need. <laughs> but as I, as I said, um, Sufism and anything really related to ethos, uh, philosophy, and um, spiritual studies, mysticism is really more complex to understand. So sometimes people really actually rather struggle to even talk about it because it's like, um, it's full of symbolism. Like uh, I don't, we haven't maybe touched in this session too much about the symbolism in Sufism, but um, for example, in Futuba, there is a lot of symbolism, like um, even, even when it comes to the interpretation and the tafsir of Quran, uh, they say there are two ways of interpreting the Quran, the, the, the outer meaning, and then also the, uh, the inner meaning. So when co we contemplate back on the Quran, it, the Quran actually itself says, uh, that its meanings are uncomprehensible. There are so many, like whenever we read it again, there's something we will get a new message or so. And that is actually that what you mentioned about self-contemplation, meaning, and a lot many things that you mentioned. For example, I would love if we could go back because we try to, through these sessions, to kind of understand more Europe and the contemporary world. And um, regarding the quote, uh, Islam will be spiritual or it will not be. Uh, how could we understand this nowadays? Uh, from which aspects? Like for me personally, it means I just reflect back on so many examples when people tell me, I don't know, all of these lectures, these shuyukh, all of this Islamic education sometimes renders itself to being punished, just to punishment. So, and people are being so and, and frightening and people are so, um, they're tired of that and it's it's kind of it doesn't invoke any love towards god so how how do you actually contemplate back on that or how do you comprehend this okay there, there i i i sense uh, many questions in, in this one question uh just let me go back first maybe your response to your um uh idea of um you know um relationship between a dahir and a batin and that is a very important aspect of Sufism, to see in each phenomena, in each um, in each manifestations, also uh, these two aspects, also also the hidden aspects, um, in regard to the Quran, in regard to the creation, in regard to reading of the text, in regard to oneself. You know, there are uh, always these two distinctions or these two dimensions of Batin and Dacher. And they are connected. There is no Dahir without Batin and no Batin without Dahir. So the Sufism, I think the, um, the tendency, let's say, of Sufism, it, if not the task itself, uh, it depends how we understand primarily the Sufism, it's to, to ponder, to, 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 to penetrate uh, deeper um, in reality, you know, to try to understand the deeper meaning of reality. Uh, 
let be the outside reality or the inside reality, but it's it's about understanding. Um, and I'm trying very much um, on the basis of, of the text, uh, actually the classical text, uh, which I studied, um, to to see this uh, to see Sufism not not just as a ritual, you know, or as a uh, identity phenomena, but more as a sphere of activities. Of course, um, 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 it's hard to accept, you know, the new age positions uh, who tries to separate Sufism or abstract Sufism from Islam. Um, this is a little bit problematic, but for some, for someone who um, um, gets inspired by some Sufis techniques and methods and to try to make the best out of them for his own or her own spirituality, that's okay. You know, it's primarily to look at Sufism as a, in its primordial also meaning as tasawwafa, you know, it's, uh, it's a verb actually. It's not a noun, it, it, it's a verb, it's tasawwafa and from tasawwafa come tasawwuf. So it's, it's an uh, activity. And we should understand it uh, primarily also as an activity, activity of, and also a way of knowledge. It's one of the three fundamental ways of knowledge in Islam, uh, besides philosophy and theology perhaps. Um, so it is a way of knowledge, it is a way of purification. And spirituality um, is um, um, a broader category which we have to deconstruct in some way to understand what it's about. You know, it's not um, um, pure esotericism. Um, in the context of Sufism, spirituality is um, um, very much connected which, uh, with work on one's own self. So it's about discipline. It's not about um, ecstatic states and ecstasy, but it is all also about a discipline, a hard work on one's own self. So, um, um, and, and, and this is also the primary or the most important understanding of spirituality also regarding um, uh, current circumstances and uh, regarding the, maybe the question about the future and our position as Muslims, as uh, believers in, in the future. If you understand spirituality in more, a more authentic and broader sense um, as uh, an ethical religious enterprise, you know, to work on your own character, to deepen also in the truths of reality, it's both, it's, uh, it has noetic and ethic aspects, you know, it has epistemic and has also existential aspects. And, and if we understand in this way that we must give uh, a preference to, to, to the inner meaning, it's not just about the outside form, uh, but not to abrogate the outside form, not at all, uh, just somehow to revive the outside forms of religion through the spirit, you know, through the spiritual, through the consciousness. Um, simply, simply, maybe simple example, not just to, to do our prayers, but also to be present in our prayers, you know. Um, and uh, there, there you have in Sufism a very uh, practical, a very nice uh, threefold, um, um, how do you say, threefold uh, uh, diagram of certainty, you know, uh, the knowledge of certainty, um, the, the eye of certainty, and uh, the haq, uh, al wa haq al and the reality of certainty. Uh, and we, we, we should try to get as much as possible to reality of certainty, you know, not just uh, to be on the, on the level of, of words and talks and discussions, but also to, to, to practice a practical theology, you know, to, uh, and to be open for <clears throat> experiences. This is what Al-Ghazali says, is if, if you... Um, <clears throat> If you are not in the position, or if you uh, don't have mystical experiences, then at least know that there are 
outside there that there are people who have mixed, mystical experiences, try to uh, spend some time with them. So, you know, it's like a second hand. Uh, if you don't get from the first hand, it's like a second hand um, possibility. So to, to be aware of that, uh, that the religion without spirituality is um, somehow uh, empty. That's actually a really good way to put it and to explain it. And speaking about words, we have a linguistic question from the audience. Uh, in German, we usually say Islamic ethic, uh, which is Islamic ethic. Uh, shouldn't we say, the question is, shouldn't we say Islamic ethic, Islamic ethics? That's actually a good yeah, question. Is it, are there more ethics or is there just one ethic? Can we yeah, even divide yeah, it? Yeah. Exactly. This is a good point. <laughs> I also discussed with my students here. We have um, a subject, uh, Islamic, uh, I, I'm feeling in Islamic ethic, uh, introduction introduction to, Islamic ethics. To, to Islamic ethics. And we discussed this problem also, uh, if, if, there, if there is the Islamic ethic or uh, the Islamic ethics, or are just uh, many uh, ethical discourses uh, in uh, different disciplines. You know, you have uh, ethical discourse in theology, uh, which maybe um, is concerning, uh, concerning more about the nature of God and um, a free will maybe of, of man and discussing these uh, terms. Then you have uh, ethical discourse in uh, philosophy, which is um, um, much more based on, on self-perfection also, on cultivation of the character, um, um, but to do so, uh, to orientate the knowledge and the notion, uh, you know, they're looking more at, uh, at the Greek sources as in the Islamic sources, and then you have the Saul, you, you have the ethical discourses in Islamic mysticism. So um, there are maybe some um, uh, common elements um, which uh, built uh, the adjective Islamic, if you want, uh, referring uh, or in connection with, with ethics. But it's hard to say there is a one Islamic ethic. I would also prefer more like uh, et etiken, yeah? Uh, so uh, different ethics, uh, ethical discourses in different disciplines. Okay. And, uh... <laughs> As you spoke uh, on your previous uh, comment, uh, you said like, and it's just because there is a quote that I liked here uh, from, from a presentation and that said that uh, it doesn't mean if you go into metaphysics, like through contemplation, through all of that um, concentration and constant uh, meditation, actually you can reach metaphysics. You can reach some outer, I don't know, um, experiences to say it like that that we wouldn't believe in our contempt like in our reality or so but um in fact what is reality we are just in a three-dimensional world and um people through yoga try to beat that transcendental to achieve it but as you said it does not necessarily mean that you will actually achieve the tranquility of the heart which means actually you can your level of metaphysical understanding is not necessarily connected to your spirituality or your um, state of the heart. How would you how would you actually explain that? Mm -hmm. That's also a complex question. But first, let me emphasize that uh, in the Sufism there is um, much emphasis or or the notion of a direct mystical experience of direct knowledge of something and mm -hmm. the the. Um, the most important element or dimension of this direct knowledge is certainty, a way of certainty that we don't experience in other, uh, in, um, in, in a framework of other kind of, of, of knowledge or, or re re realizations. Uh, so there is a certainty, which is a very profound. And it's, um, uh, as I said, in Sufism is, an, is a notion of this uh, direct knowledge uh, often expressed by the terms like dauk, you know, to taste the reality, or, or mukashafa, unveiling, or mushahada, uh, uh, vision. Um, so you have terms which are different from reflection, 
you know, for the Sufis reflection is um, distancing, is, 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 is a distance because you reflect over something. Um, there is a distance between you and the object of knowledge. You as a subject uh, have some relationship and some distance to the object, if we put it uh, now, uh, the, the spiritual entities as, as an object. Um, and the goal is actually to minimize or to reduce or even to uh, transcend uh, this distance between you and God, between you and your object of, of knowledge. And you cannot do it through re reflection and you cannot do it through lectures and studies, but through uh, direct mystical experiences, which is the, the unity of experiences. Uh, and uh, at its peak, you know, uh, like a unity of experiences um, of Fana. Um, <clears throat> so there is a very strong emphasis of direct mystical knowledge, which is experience, and which is the only one in the context of Sufis of, of Sufism, uh, uh, the the only the only way to get the certain knowledge, uh, the, the certainty, or the certainty of, of, weight, of faith. And uh, in, in this sense, we should also understand Al-Ghazali that says in his Munkad Mina Dalal, that those who, who are not tasting the reality of uh, prophecy, you know, or of the revealed words of the Quran, they have, uh, at the end of the day, they have nothing, but Al-Ghazali, as just um, terms or words. Now, this is maybe too uh, too much black and white, you know, <laughs> too much opposites. Uh, we have we have other positions. Uh, uh, for example, Muhammad Iqbal, who is criticizing Al Ghazali and uh, who is arguing that Al Ghazali didn't recognize or didn't see that even reflection refined through meditation can, uh, he says, transcend the walls of, uh, um, of limits. So there is a way that through reflection, that the reflection maybe at some point um, becomes a kind of contemplation, which is more than just a reflection. You know, the contemplation is meditation plus reflection. Uh, let me put it uh, this way. Um, so both is important. I think both is important to have an experience, but also to be able to um, to define this experience, to understand this experience, maybe to put it in, in broader theological context. And therefore you have to have um, uh, in religious context or in spiritual context, also a knowledge. Um, also knowledge of the tradition, also um, rational knowledge, to be able to define, to localize, to, to, to put on the proper uh, place your experience. But in Sufism, of course, there is more emphasis on experience, on experiences, uh, which are not just emotional things, which are not just, you know, um, uh, affects and emotions, but um, have very strong, as William James says, well, very strong noetic aspects, you know, epistemic dimension. There are way, uh, ways of knowledge, of direct knowledge, which transcend theological knowledge. You know, it's something else if you discuss about uh, 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 essence of God and attributes of God, or if you experience uh, some attributes of God. It is different if you, um, discuss and try to rationalize um, the notion of uh, Rahma regarding God and to try to understand, understand it conceptually. And it is something else to um, um, experience it, you know, existentially. And this is what, what the Sufis are striving for. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I, I, if I uh, answered your, your, your question. Maybe I got yes. a little bit lost in my answering. <laughs> As I said, it's really <clears throat> it's difficult to speak Sufism, about Sufism and everything. And it's actually really interesting. 
Um, this is maybe even more personal and it refers now to personal growth. And I just want to add that it seems like people even disagree on the notion of whether it's ethics or it's just ethic, because we have one comment that actually even in Bosnia we use just the, the singular. So um, I don't know, maybe I, sometimes I even think that the language and anything related to spiritual studies also, anything that is more, I don't know, metaphysical, it's really difficult to, to define anyway. So language is actually too poor. We, I, I, probably we haven't even reached the stage where we can define all of these um, abstracts and everything. And reading, for example, uh, you mentioned some of really prominent uh, thinkers in Islamic, in, in Sufism, like Ibn Arabi and Ghazali. And I liked one, one thing in your presentation that you mentioned, and it's, uh, in fact, that Al Ghazali said it's the way to recognize and to, con to contemplate the world in his creations, in God's creations. I don't know whether you know the story where Al Ghazali was robbed on the way by some thieves, and they said, What is this? He said, It's books. And basically, they say, Like, uh, now, when we take all of your books, you lost all of your knowledge. And then he realized, oh my God, this was actually a sign of God. I have to study this. I, I, like, I can't rely on my books. So basically, it's this how we um, perceive anything that happens. Like, how did the studying and researching about Sufism affect you and your personality and personal growth? Again, there are many uh, layers in your in your questions. <laughs> in, in yeah, your questions. I love I love layers. <laughs> and Sufism is about to you know to reveal the, the layers, the layer upon the layer. Uh, maybe just a small remark uh, or response about the language, uh, which is also very important. Uh, the problem of language or the nature of language. No, we are not going in the, uh, about the nature of language, but at least a problem of language in the context of Sufism or, or Islamic mysticism. Um, and this has to do, you know, we are, when we are talking about now primarily about the language, we are meaning Arabic or maybe, maybe Persian, but Arabic language, which uh, the language of, of uh, in which uh, the main sources are to be found uh, regarding Sufism when it's about Sufism and Islamic mysticism. And as you know, um, the problem with, um, with Arabic language is that uh, it does not have a meta language. That means when we um, explain something, you know, we often use the words which are not, you know, Bosnian or, or even German, but are, are, are foreign words. Um, and uh, they become, they became already like uh, categories, you know, when I'm talking about contemplation or meditation or I don't know, something like that. And then I'm explaining it in, 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 in another language or in our own, uh, sorry, in our own, own language. So uh, we, we are constantly operating with this meta language with, or meta uh, level of, of language. In, in Arabic, it's not like that. You have actually words which are still in use today, of course, but um, they change, they have a specific connotation in specific context. So, you know, when I'm talking about muhasaba, it's come from hasaba and this, uh, you know, to calculate also, but uh, in connection with nafs, muhasaba and nafs, it's about introspection, it's about to, to examine as your own self, you know, to calculate with your own self, to uh, have a full in, uh, or it gets um, a broader aspect and, and at the same time a specific meaning. Um, so it's very important to understand these words, which are uh, a termini, a termini technicus, you know, um, in, the, in, in a specific discipline. Um, and the Sufis are masters of, 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 of doing that. You know, uh, they are really do, um, or uh, I see that the Sufi authors um, tried, very much, very hard to explain the words, to explain the termini. Um, and they are deepen the words also. 
then using many words from everyday life or the words um, in religious context, but they are deep in it in their own context. Uh, or they are using words which are uh, common words like wakt, and they gave them a special meaning. You know? Uh, so, yes, we, we have to be aware about the multi layers of, of words also and the specific meaning of, of these words in a specific context. Um, what was your second question about? Uh, How that study that Sufism actually uh, impacted your personal growth. Oh yeah, okay, because you gave also the example of Al Ghazali and there are many, many yes. similar sto stories uh, also uh, encountered. Sufis are full of stories, yes. Rumi and Shams Tabrizi and all these stories, oh, yes. and, or Al-Bistami, all these stories try to emphasize the, the, the um, quality, the, the difference in quality between, you know, learned um, knowledge and um, transcendental knowledge, if you want. You know, one knowledge which can be gained uh, through studies and thinking and reflection, which has its own place and importance, um, but is on the lower level uh, regarding the mystical knowledge, which is direct knowledge of God, which is in the form of ilham or mukashafa or mushahada. And this is what all Sufis actually uh, emphasizing is that there are two, at least two kinds of, of knowledge. Uh, or ways of, of realization, and that this mystical spiritual, which is also experiential and existential knowledge, is higher because it affects you all. It affects you as a human being, not just your cognitive aspect, not just your rational aspect, but also your emotional, your spiritual aspect, and uh, and it's much more, much more, uh, uh, much much deeper in this sense, strongly, you know. Um, um, it, it's a famous saying of Al-Bistami, for example, uh, uh, when, when he says, uh, Abu Yazid Al-Bistami, when he says that um, they, he refers to uh, religious scholars, they get their, their death, the death, uh, you know, totes wissen, death knowledge from, from the death, and we are receiving our, uh, the, uh, Living, you know, yeah, uh, lively knowledge from from the one who never never dies. You know, um, mm. it's maybe a little bit provocative, you know, and uh, I don't want to make a, 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 a distinction or 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 or, or um, a war between mystics and theologians. There are many mystics who were theologians and many theologians who are mystics, but there is a point here. There is a point here. There is a way of knowledge which we get through learning, through studying, through reflecting uh, from outside, from in, uh, external instances, you know, uh, and there, are, there is uh, knowledge which is um, a result of self-transformation on the one hand and God's mercy on the other hand, um, and is my this is, this is the, the, the main Differences between Maharifa, as we understand it as a mystical knowledge, and Ilum, in broader sense, as a rational theologian, uh, theological, philosophical knowledge. You know? Both are important, uh, uh, important, but there is this distinction. For me personally, um, you know my way. Uh, I uh, my background was philosophy, and then um, Islamic philosophy, and uh, um, uh, in the Islamic philosophy, I, I discovered Al-Ghazali, and actually Al-Ghazali was for me uh, a bridge between philosophy and mysticism, and through Al-Ghazali, then I came to discover rich, great tradition of Sufism, of Islamic mysticism, and uh, now at, at the moment, currently, I'm uh, writing a book, or I'm working on, on a book uh, um, on uh, a mystical theology of Abdul Jabbar Nifari. Which is um, very, um, um, which is unknown in German-speaking uh, place, and I'm trying to to fill this gap. 
amazing. Um, we hope to read it then when it's ready. <laughs> uh, I want to thank you so very much. Like uh, it was really insightful, everything that you said. And I think at the end, whatever we can, if we wanted to learn anything personally from this, from your pr presentation, it's basically that um, it's probably self-consciousness and being conscious uh, all the time or trying like to train ourselves to be conscious at the end to if we want to apply any of those uh, basic Sufi practices in our everyday life and try to grow from it. So it's basically the knowledge of at the end, trying to understand all of ourselves, trying to understand our hearts. So basically, and being truthful to ourselves, like being honest sometimes mm -hmm. and when we self-contemplate. So basically, if we that's kind of at the end of the day, whenever someone would ask me about Sufism to, to say anything, it's just basically to try to understand your heart, be honest and to try yes. to love, live love. Yes. <laughs> exactly, and try to, um, try to transcend yourself. Yes. You know, yes. uh, this is a, a lifelong project uh, on, a, on a vertical, level you know um whatever you do uh, what, or whatever we do um that we should be aware of transcending ourselves in the sense to approaching uh the higher and the better you know and in yes. doing so in doing so and that's the the most important or that's the point in doing so we already produce um a moral qualities through this spiritual endeavor and enterprise, we are already producing a moral qualities, which are so which important. Is also, then the solution, if we all, if we all that do and practice a kind of a solution to any moral contemporary crises of any religion, at the end, probably. So, thank you so very much. I will thank the audience also for their questions and for uh, watching this on a Friday evening, and. Um, I'm looking forward to the next session when we're going to have another amazing speaker. And as I said, or you can you can uh, find all of the work of uh, Rai because this is just it, this is just the basics. He wrote many other things, and I hope you will enjoy his his research, uh, his studies, and his work. So thanks once again, and uh, have a good evening. Bye bye.